All right, welcome back to the Malapert Smart Podcast. I got Vlad, the wrestling expert here. I got Robert, still the frozen uh, Asian. Still frozen. He's still frozen. He's at a big party right now. Oh, it's New Year's. It's about to be New Year's. I get it. I get it. New, like the AW Dynamite was called New Year's Smash, the last Dynamite from this past Wednesday. The go home for the AW World's End pay per view, which is coming up tomorrow. So we're going to do a little preview and predict a little bit of predictions for this. Sometimes I don't like doing prediction shows because they're only relevant until the show starts, and then they're kind of not really relevant videos anymore. But we're going to do some reviews of the past week on Dynamite, too, and show some videos so it won't be completely useless. This is the big show that everyone's waiting for, the year-end show. This is a new pay-per-view that they haven't had yet. This is the first iteration of World's End. I rather like the name of it. World's End. I'm a big Pirates of the Caribbean fan, so that was the name of the third movie mm-hmm. at World's mm-hmm. End. It's pretty dramatic. I remember. But... I remember. I remember. Mm-hmm. So we just did our segment last week on is AEW in trouble? Just in general, business-wise, are they going to get thrown off television? I got a fair amount of views. We got some disagreeable comments. Some AEW fans were mad that I said AEW hurt the business. I don't know. I got my opinions, you guys got your opinions, we got different tastes in wrestling, I guess. That's okay. But let's put everything that we've said about AEW to the side and let's try to analyze what's been going on with this pay-per-view and the build-up to it and everything. So let's start. Let's jump right into it. I got four topics, and then after that, whatever you guys want to talk about regarding the show, if there's anything that you deem worthy enough or important enough. But I'm going to start with the whole MJF thing. So this past week on Wednesday, Samoa Joe (laughs) revealed himself to be working with the devil. It was a big shock, a big surprise, I guess. I think it makes the story kind of make better sense, because why was Samoa Joe helping MJF trying to keep him healthy but let's go back one week and let's go over what happened recently leading up to this so I'm gonna go back not to this past dynamite but to the one before that on the 20th it was called holiday bash this past Wednesday was called New Year's smash this one was called holiday bash (laughs) so (laughs) that was the theme of the episode but one week after Samoa Joe got attacked by the devil's masked henchmen here as we're going to see he ends up showing that he's one of them so he's been working with the devil but let's watch some of this scene because he came out and he accused mjf of being the devil still because he was laid out and nobody saw him get laid out down gingerly laid down in the back passed out very conveniently on the ground we are just long island so he called out MJF. MJF so comes out. In the back, the goons surround the ring, but I don't recall them laying a finger on you, Joe. So let's see. I don't like you. Now, I don't trust you. So I'm a little bit confused. Why am I waiting until December 30th at World's End? When I can end your world right now! MJF! Gotta be careful here, Max. He might get some fingers in his eyes. So this is where the Devil's Masked Henchmen come in. So for those of you who don't know, I'll let this run a little bit before I press pause and explain it. So we gotta fill the people in on this long-ass story that's been happening. So MJF was a bad guy. He was the Devil. He bragged about it. He had a devil mask. And then when he turned into a good guy because he became friends with Adam Cole and found his softer side, someone stole his devil mask and has been tormenting him with these masked men. Before, there were just like four. Now, as you're going to see, like 50 of them come in. And I don't really like when they do this because they did this in the Dark Order angle a long time ago. Like, who are all these people? These are obviously not going to be members of this group. It's not going to be a stable with 30 freaking people. But it's funny looking back on this retrospectively because Samojo (laughs) is working with them. And then the lights go out, and this is where uh, the devil makes a challenge to them for the ROH world title, which is this past Wednesday, so I'm going to skip to that. Oh, actually... A funny thing about this segment was that Samoa Joe is the one that ended up accepting the challenge. (laughs) So, man, they worked MJF really good here. 
kayfabe wise if you look at the storyline man he got fooled pretty nice i mean at the end he was saying yeah why am i trusting you you're not even doing a good job defending me so they were gonna get down but the devil met people came and now i'm gonna skip to this past wednesday and we're gonna show the match finally between samoa joe and mjf against two mystery masked men so here they come and here's mjf and then what happens is samoa joe is supposed to come out but he's laid out in the back he's in horrible pain he's screaming like a little bitch listen to him scream like dude i broke my leg like my bone came out of my ankle i wasn't screaming like this <laughs> but okay <laughs> well, i got no comment on that <laughs> So MJF, he's like, hell no, I'm doing this, I'm going to do this myself, and he's going to do the match two on one. So this is the first instance where we see these guys fight. I don't know if anyone wants to analyze their fighting style to see who it could be. I watched it, no clue, no clue who it is, but they had a little bit of a match, and what happened was, in the end, there was a third guy who came from under the ring and cracked MJF with the pipe. And that led to them hitting MJF with his own move, the Heat Seeker, and just like that, taking the ROH Tag Team titles <laughs> flat off of MJF and Adam Cole, who is nowhere to be found. So that whole long angle where they were trying to keep title on MJF and Cole till he came back, it's over. We got new Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions. I don't know who they are. It's just two guys. <laughs> I'm interested to go to the website and see who they list as the champion. <laughs> so there's going to be a beatdown. And then Samoa Joe comes out to save him very dramatically. But as I've already spoiled for you guys, we know this is all a ru This is some, <laughs> some acting job he's doing <laughs> for MJF. <laughs> <laughs> Limping well, all the way to the ring it. like that. Let's watch that again. Look at him. Watch, watch some more, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> at first, I thought it was real, and I was like, "Wow, good acting." But as I've showed you earlier in our segment here today, the devil, whoever this man is, came up on the screen and sent a message, pleasure doing business with you, which is what Samoa Joe says. And then Samoa Joe does the little head turn, <laughs> to, head tilt to the left. <laughs> the obligatory heel turn, head tilt a little bit this way. We gotta see that one more time, close up, right here. <laughs> All right, well, I can't say I hated this, but so Mojo's gonna grab him, tell him I did this to you. He's not the devil himself, but he's one of the devil's main guys. I don't know, I assume he would be his right hand man or something once it gets revealed. I don't know if this is gonna get revealed tomorrow. For whoever's listening to this, we're recording this before World's End, so if you happen to catch this afterward, we have no idea what happened. That's that though. Anyways, let's lower the volume. I'm gonna get some comments. We can start with Vlad, the wrestling expert. Whatever you want to talk about, that whole scene with the million masked henchmen that came out, the tag title change, the Samoa Joe heel turn. Well, he's already a heel, but he's aligned himself with the devil, the masked devil. It's yeah, you know, like well, look, I, I'm under the opinion that, you know, I'm a big fan of Samoa Joe and I'm a big fan of MJF, but I, I also think this whole devil thing, as you've seen, some of our past shows I'm not too happy with as far as the creative on it, the booking and whatnot. So there's two things that are ridiculous. It's ridiculous to have Ring of Honor tag team champions. And it's also ridiculous that some mass men are the tag team champions of the Ring of Honor. And it was also ridiculous that MJF had defended those titles on like the pay-per-views, like the pre-shows. I mean, there's so much ridiculousness going on with these belts and this angle and everything that's gone on that I don't even know what to make of it, but I'll give them credit for, I guess, trying something. This is something at least. It's not like, it's an angle. It's not Talk a great about angle. Joe though. Is there anything positive you could think about this? Yeah. Um, uh, well, I mean, just that Joe's a professional. He's a pro. He's great. I've always said he's great. He do, he's great in everything that he does as far as pro wrestling, but this is not like the best stuff I've ever seen Joe in. I'm not really feeling this whole thing. At least it was revealed that he wasn't the devil. I don't know if it means that he's working with the devil, like you said, that he's there, he's his right hand person, or he was just working on a deal just to 
make sure that like they trick MJF that he kind of gets injured for the match. Maybe that's all that meant. I don't think he's going to be actually in line as far as a member of the group. Or I mean, I could be wrong. I guess he could be, but I doubt it. Anyways, I think uh, I think he'll be in the group. I think he'll be in the group. I don't think so. I don't think so. Joe's uh, not a guy that's usually in groups. But anyways, just to, real quick, like main I like mafia. But okay. <laughs> Sorry, oh, Bef Be off, yeah. before you move on to what you're saying afterwards, give a prediction for the MJF Joe match. How is it going to end? Okay, well, like I said, two really good talents. Those are the only things I, I will say about it. But how is it going to end? How is the match going to end? I think they will reveal who the devil is. And I think the devil or his group are probably going to cost him Jeff. And I think Smojo is going to become the champion. I think, I think it's, it's the way to... I think it's the way to do it. At this point, it makes no sense otherwise. If MJF just retains again, it's going to be... I mean, I'm a big MJF fan, and I think he should have the champ... In this company, I would be I would be fine if he held the title just as long as Roman Reigns, because really, there really is no secondary or third guy that should have the belt over him. He is the whole damn show for them. He's everything. But the way they've built this whole thing up, for it to make sense, I think Joe has to kind of take the title by cheating and by the help of... This group now the question is who's the group going to be i'm not 100 percent sure i still am leaning towards the kingdom and and roddy and probably adam cole as being the, the four main members of the group so and joe's going to just benefit from them getting involved oh, man. i guess that's this my is going to be some day then i'm gonna take the day off and watch this i don't think any of that's <laughs> going to happen but okay let's move on to robert okay. Give us some thoughts, whatever thoughts you've been holding on about uh, what you just saw on the past two Dynamites, and then All your right. predictions. Not a huge fan of the angle so far, of, up to this past episode, that, the way it ended, that wasn't too bad. But leading up to this uh, previous Dynamite, I wasn't really a fan of the angle. Uh, I did actually analyze the tag team, the, those two masked men. Um, I analyzed their movements. I was focusing on what moves they did to see if I would be able to catch a hint as to who they could possibly be. But they didn't really reveal too much. Yeah. They, they mimicked other people's, they mimicked MJS finish, but nothing to really give away their identity. So, but yeah, I did actually analyze it. With Samoa Joe's betrayal, I didn't see that coming oh, of course until he tilted his head and i'm like all right uh, he's <laughs> yeah. about to. but um, be before that the head tilt i didn't actually see the turn happening even though he's already a heel but it was a good ruse it was a good setup to hurt mjf right before the world's end and give samoa joe an advantage leading up to their match for the prediction i don't think mjf is gonna lose actually i still think MJF is still somehow going to retain the title. One of my reasonings for that is because Samoa Joe, he's clearly not the one calling the shots. Whoever is wearing that devil mask is, that's yet to be revealed. And I also do think they're going to reveal who it is at World End. So whoever is wearing that devil mask, I'm pretty sure that person wants the title from MJF and will be going after it after the reveal happens, assuming it does happen during the pay-per-view. So that, that's why I don't think Samoa Joe is going to win. And speaking of reveals, I, I know a long time ago, I kind of just went with a long shot prediction saying that Adam Copeland, not Adam Cole, Adam Copeland would be the devil. And I know it's still a long shot, but I'm still going to stick with that prediction just because I, <laughs> I think I think it has to be a somewhat of a surprise. I, I don't want it to be someone that's predictable. There's like three names that keep coming up over and over again. One of them is Adam Cole. One of them is Roderick Strong, and I believe Jack Perry is the other person that, yeah. that those three names keep getting mentioned over and over again. If it turns out to be either one of those three, I feel like it would be too predictable. I, I want there to be some shock value in the reveal. So I would, hope, right, that right. I would hope that it's be uh, Adam Copeland, but we'll see. That's an interesting thought. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm with Vlad. I think Samoa Joe is going to win the title tomorrow. But I don't think they're going to reveal who the devil is. I think they might reveal somebody, but I think they think that they got to string this out a little bit longer because they got nothing else going on. That's my guess. But I hope they do. I hope we find out tomorrow and it's some something big that we can what? talk about. Well, then why do you think he's going to win? Somebody's going to help him cheat? Yeah, he's obviously aligned with them. He has allies, but I don't think they're going to actually say who the devil is. I think they might wait on that, but we'll see. I could be wrong. That's just my prediction. I'm just guessing. Because I've seen that before in TNA. 
when they did aces and eights, they yeah, revealed them. They, they dragged it out for a while. Yeah. They revealed one person at a time. Like one week, they would rip off one of the guys' mask off, and next week, the next guy, and the next week, the next guy. And, well, uh, just the only thing I'll say to that is that the aces and eights angle was a lot better than this. So at least in the beginning, at least in the beginning. It also maybe the mask devil that. man is Bully Ray. That would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Vince McMahon, damn you. Oh, it was yeah, me, well, Austin. Shoot. It was me all along. <laughs> all right, look, we got a lot to talk about. We got to move on to the next topics. As uh, much as sure. I want to stay and talk about who the devil might be, but let's just wait sure. on that. The next topic I'm going to get to is Christian Cage and Edge, as he's known in AEW, Adam Copeland. We're going to go back to AEW Collision. The 23rd so that was this past saturday and christian showed up and he was gonna answer edge's challenge right edge challenged him to a no dq match at yep. world's end so christian comes out to give an answer to this on i'm sure something that robert didn't see because you don't really watch collision <laughs> so we can do a little bit of this scene do you see this blend yeah i did Sit down, shut your mouths. While hold on, I hold on. I'm gonna skip forward a little bit. Are the events that transpired a couple weeks ago on Dynamite and Monday? Okay. People want so now he's gonna get to talking about why Shayna Wayne helped him win that match against Edge. So real quick summary for people who haven't been filled in on this. Edge and Christian, former friends. Edge came to AEW, wanted to reunite with Christian. Christian wasn't having it. He thought Edge was trying to steal the spotlight away from him. Acted like a total dick. At the beginning, Edge was still trying to be his friend still, but eventually he said such horrible things about him and his family that he ended up having to fight him. Another thing is Nick Wayne. So I'm sorry, I got to go through this flat like this, but just give me one second. <laughs> Nick Wayne was an innocent little new wrestler in AEW who got corrupted by Christian. And his mother, Shayna, has uh, been around to try to tell him to come back to the light. But no, Nick Wayne is into this thing with his new father figure, Christian. And they were going to actually attack Shayna one day when she came to try to talk to Nick. And they were going to concerto her, smash her head between two steel chairs. But Edge saved her. But then yeah. Edge took out her son, Nick Wayne, right in front of him. So that's why she ended up siding with Christian, the TNT title match they had on Dynamite. So there you go. Long story, but I try to summarize it as best as I could. It was still surprising somewhat, but you know what? Edge did a really weird thing. Why did he smash Nick Wayne's head like that in front of his mother? I know Nick Wayne was on the wrong side, but he's a kid. He doesn't know what he's doing. So here we get the follow-up to this, and we're going to get an explanation a little bit from these guys. Hi, Nick's mom smashed the rated R superstar Adam Copeland in the head with my TNT championship. Now I can sit here and I can explain it to you myself, but why should I do that when she can do it herself? Huh? So without further ado, oh damn, Robert, can you believe this? <laughs> San Antonio, get on your feet and show some respect for Shayna Wayne. So here comes Shayna Wayne. This is a woman that not only lost her husband, but also now has lost her son to Christian Cage. Oh, She's whatever. Who is that? Kevin Kelly? I can't that's forget. Kevin Kelly. That's Kevin Kelly. Terrible. That's Kevin Kelly, yeah. Shayna? Oh, whatever. The floor is yours. All right, so Shayna's going to cut a promo. Robert, let's analyze uh, this promo. Uh, <laughs> well, He's getting booed. Can you believe this? Shivani. What is Shivani talking about? Yeah, they have been drinking. Who do they think she is, Dominic? <laughs> Wonder 
why I made the choice that I did. I did what any loving mother would do. I protected my son. Really? Really? Through a mother? Really? Through it all, I've, something's been made very, very clear to me. The one person that loves and cares for my son as much as I do is the patriarch, Christian Cage. Doesn't she have an HOA to run? Thanks, Cam. Man. Later on today, we're going to record a segment for our award show for, you know, things of the year. And one of them is going to be Best Angle. I would have considered Christian versus Edge, but I think the Shayna Wayne involvement kind of disqualifies it a little bit because <laughs> she's, she's up there trying. I don't know. Anyone have any comments about that or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, well, you know what? She was trying. And, yeah, this wasn't – she's been worse before in some of her acting in those backstage segments. This one at least kind of was more clear because she had a point to make and she kind of made it. She explained why she did what she did pretty concisely. It, it all made sense. It was kind of logical, I would say. So, yeah, I mean, the way she's kind of talking, kind of really slow, I'm a uh, mother. Okay, I mean, look, she doesn't have the experience. Okay, she's not like someone that's experienced on the microphone talking in front of a couple thousand people, whatever there is at Collision. So, I mean, I, I'm giving her some benefit of the doubt or a break because you could maybe make a case that she shouldn't be involved in that case. Okay, sure. But this is not the worst thing that AEW has done. So this is maybe one of the better things. Well, yeah, exactly. Christian's involvement. Yeah, That's why we're covering Christian, it. Well, Christian is, uh, I mean, he's, uh, this is some of the best work of his career. I really do believe. Well, hold on, because we're going to hear more from Christian. But let me hear yeah, Robert I know, I know. about Shayna Wayne first. All right, I'll keep this brief. I'll just say this, okay? She executed that better than the headshot with the belt the other week. <laughs> right, right, right. right, right. Sure. Oh, then that's it. Yeah, I didn't think it was yeah. that bad. I thought yeah, it was it funny. It wasn't too bad. I, you know, her. she made a point. I'm a mother. Yeah. How dare you boo me? I've given birth. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hear what Christian had to say a little bit of it. I'm not going to play the whole thing. But... And now Shayna realizes what I've always known, and the world realizes what I've always known, and that Adam Copeland is a despicable human being. He is a piece of crap. Yep. That's why he's the devil. Shayna Wayne kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> worked as a waitress for $40,000 a year. She worked bottom feeding, loser, low end jobs just to put food on her son's plate to try to make his dream come true of becoming a pro wrestler. And with well, one swing of that concerto- Another thing I gotta say about Shayna Wayne that I didn't mention is that, man, these people have monster senses of humor to be going along with this. They are really like fun people. You gotta admit that. There's a lot of really dark humor in what they're sure, doing well, here. Yeah, sure, sure. But I'm pretty sure they're getting paid substantially more than they would be anywhere doing anything else by Tony Khan for being involved in this. Yeah, but still not uh, everyone would do it. Not everyone would do it, even for money. They understand wrestling. Adam, you <laughs> tried to take that whole dream away. Yeah, you try to kill her son. And you would Literally. think that if anybody would understand their situation, she worked all these years to raise him, if anybody would have him. a little empathy for their situation, it would be you, considering you yourself grew up with a single mother that did those same crappy loser jobs to make sure you realized your dream. And now, Adam, there's a small, a very small part of me that wishes your mother was still alive so I could watch her disown you on behalf of all single Damn. mothers all over the world. Oh, this is... <laughs> but Adam, it's about your rage, isn't it, huh? Your anger issues, you've never been able to, to harness your anger properly. And it cost you big time in Montreal, didn't it? Montreal was not a very good night for you. It was a great night for me. Not only did I score the biggest victory in my career and retain my championship, but I scored another way that night. <laughs> this is awesome. When I walked out of Montreal with my matriarch, when I walked out of Montreal 
I can't believe Robert doesn't watch Collision. Another battle is complete. I'll dress your challenge that you made, Adam. When you challenged me at World's End for a TNT Championship match and a no disqualification match, I'll accept your invitation for a fight at World's End, but I will not accept it as a challenge because you are no challenge. I've already beaten you. See, now you're realizing what I've told you all along. I am levels above you and everybody else in this business. I stand on the mountaintop as the very best in this sport. Let's see how he's going to end this promo. End, on behalf of your mother and all the single mothers all over the world, I am going to take you behind the shed and put you down in Long Island for the last time. Mm. All right. Murder. On behalf of all the single mothers, because he was going to murder that girl's son, that poor woman. All right, so this was from Collision from the 23rd, and then I'm going to skip to what happened this past Wednesday on Dynamite, Dynamite on the 27th. There was supposed to be a backstage sit-down, and when I heard the idea for this, Vlad, I was like, a backstage sit-down with Edge and Adam Copeland? How the fuck? <laughs> I was just even supposed to this go after him. Well. Is Adam coming or, or he's going to leave the champion waiting? One of us is professional, at least, I guess. It's great. So that's uh that was earlier in the show, and then I think many, many segments passed by. They cut back to it, and they're going to do the interview now. So this is it. Seriously. You're going to leave me hanging? Me, the face of TNT. Excuse, excuse me, guys. Adam Copeland is here. I'm well, get him in here. I've been waiting forever. Let's go. I got things to do. Christian Copeland, face to face, next live on Dynamite. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with Nick Wayne, Shana Wayne, the TNT champion, the patriarch. First of all, it's Mother Wayne and the prodigy Nick Wayne. I've been sitting here all night waiting for Adam Copeland to show up. Just Mother ask, Wayne. What the hell? Oh. You see, this is exactly what I thought would happen. <laughs> he said, what the hell? <laughs> Up all the security. <laughs> Poor Christian. We're just there to have an interview. Look at him getting his ass kicked. All the wrestlers, all the baby fresh wrestlers are out. I don't know who the heck this guy is. Like cowboy hat. Action and ready, I see. I don't know who that guy is. <laughs> Terrible job pulling them apart. Terrible job. They're gonna let him get, get away again. Look at Edge, he looks demented. <laughs> he does have a good demented look. He does. This he is does. a pretty good backstage fight though. In terms of AEW, this is probably one of their weak points. Usually their backstage fights are kind of weak. <laughs> that looks really cool. That'll probably be my thumbnail on this fucking YouTube video. They're ready to go. No DQ match this Sunday at World's End. Should be the blow off. Looks like it's going to be the last match. Any thoughts? Any predictions? Robert. Let's go with Robert. Okay. Well, first of all, that promo from Collision was awesome. <laughs> yep. Christian continues to do great work as a heel. He's amazing. One of the best heels in the business for sure. Uh, I do have to disagree with what you said. The involvement of Shayna Wayne made this angle not as great to you anymore. I wouldn't say in her involvement necessarily made it better, but at the same time, I don't think it made it any worse. I am still very interested in this angle in particular and their feud, and I'm interested in their match for World's End. So I, I don't think it made it worse for me personally. As for predictions... If this is really the blow off, I, I say Adam Copeland wins. I don't know what the fallout will be after the match, but I still predict an Adam Copeland victory. Vlad, thoughts? Any thoughts on the yeah. promos, the backstage brawl, the predictions for the yeah. match? Yeah, well, I mean... Uh, and also, know, like, sorry, think... also, also yeah. Shayna Wayne aligning with Christian now and being his, his woman. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, okay. So, well, that, it is a lot, but you brought up. Okay, so as far as the promo, I second Robert completely. I've been saying the same thing. That Christian is a tremendous promo. He's probably one of the best heels in the business. He's doing some of the best work of his career. That includes his work in WWE and TNA. So he's doing great. Shayna's involvement, it makes sense, given the fact that her son is involved. So it's not like completely out of nowhere. And the fact that she's that she saw that her son got concertoed by Adam Copeland, a.k.a. Edge. AK, whatever. It, it all makes sense. It all makes sense. Okay, the backstage thing, I was going to say, yeah, it wasn't bad, but they had a similar thing not that long ago with Christian and Darby that was kind of similar to this. It was my only criticism. They have backstage attacks all the time in this company. If this was like a one-off, I would say, you know what? Good job. This was not bad. But since they do it all the time, there's been stuff with MJF and, and Jericho and Omega was attacked backstage just so many times. I mean, they do it all the time. So that's my only thing. Was this okay? Sure. But... In a vacuum, in a vacuum. But when you consider all of it, mm, they've done it so many times, so who cares? All right, how about the predictions for how is this going to end? Yeah, that's where I'm going. I have to agree with Robert. If this is the blow-off and if this is their final match, which most likely it will be, then you would think the good guy has to go over, so Adam Copeland. But Robert also has some theory that Adam Copeland is the devil, so, I mean, I don't know. In that case, you know, we don't really know. But Man, I'll um, bet my house if I had one that – Adam Copeland's not the devil, but go ahead, Vlad. Sorry. <laughs> well, yeah. That's well, why I okay, said it's so, a long shot. But... <laughs> well, that's what I, well, I'm going with the fact that, yeah, Adam Copeland's going to go over All and right. going to win this match. Yeah, I guess. Because Christian's been a heel for a long time, so they got to end his reign at some point. He's been talking a yeah. lot of crap, so you'd think at some point it's going to end and he'll take a little break and go away. Maybe this is that time. Plus, they got a new heel faction coming in to take over whenever that happens. So, okay. I mean, I guess I'll go along with that. I think Edge is going to win, too. I think he'll take the title. So let's move along. we got more to talk about. Uh, I'm going to move on to the Continental Classic Tournament. Exciting. The headline I'm going to put on this video is that Swerve didn't win. Because I think that's what everyone thought, that Swerve was going to come out of this and this was going to be the way they made Swerve Strickland, at least, you know. Like Stone Cold winning the King of the Ring or something. But surprised to see that in this final of their group, they had a three-way because they all ended up with equal points. But Swerve didn't get pinned, but he didn't win. So Moxley is going to the final. Moxley, of all people. I couldn't believe it. But okay, I was surprised at this one. And then... Right after that, they send Swerve to do a promo backstage, which I'm gonna analyze here. We gotta analyze this because I think this is a tough spot. It was predicted by many to win this, and he's very disappointed. So this is an interesting promo. Let's see how he does with it. Uh, but John Moxley moves on. <laughs> he moves on. He don't even give me time to rest. He don't even give me time to get my, gather my thoughts, cool off, get a towel, nothing. I'm still sweating. My arm is falling off of my body right now because of those two men. I wanted it so bad, Tony. And you know that. This man knows that. AW, the rest of the fan base knows I wanted it so freaking bad. Tell them, boy. <laughs> when I said this Continental Classic was breathing life and injection back into the wrestling business, right. the entire industry, not just AEW, I meant that shit. I swear to God, <laughs> I wanted it. I proved that I'm one of the best in the industry, if not the best. I didn't get pinned. Jay White got pinned. <laughs> Matter of fact, let's, let's go over. That's There's a good point, over there. I guess. That's his out. Says a braille building houses with bricks. Somebody's looking for me, huh? Keith Lee? Yeah. You say I'm the. So then immediately they spin him off into continuing his feud with Keith Lee, which I was like, ah, oh, I put my head down. I was like, wow, what a disappointment. So that's the match at World's End Keith Lee against Swerve Strickland. Damn. Anybody want to make a comment about Swerve not winning before I move on to what happens um, with Kingston and Danielson? The only comment I would make is that I've said several times before that I I think Moxley was the favorite to win it. So just based on that, I mean, so far it seems to be heading that direction. and We don't know what's going to happen in the final, but I did say Moxley was a favorite. I, I don't I'm know not, why you think surprised. that. Coming off a loss to Orange Cassidy, I don't know why you think Moxley was the favorite to win, but okay. I guess, yeah, he's the biggest name, but there was a lot of guys coming up, like Swerve, like Jay White, 
that you think this would be useful to them. But I agree with that. The, a win for Jay White or Swerve, it would do more for them than it would for John Moxley. I definitely agree with that. But I still thought Moxley was the favorite. I'm just saying. It doesn't help him as much as it would the others, but I somehow thought he was still going to make it to the, at the very least, to the final. Uh, and as far as Swerve's call out to Keith Lee, man, what a downer. Like, <laughs> that's the matchup you come up with for World's End. Yeah, I know. Not, We're not, not even going to make a prediction for that. Let's, I, let's I, move I on really from that. <clears throat> Vlad, any comments on Swerve not winning? You surprised by this booking when you saw Moxley get the pinfall? No. No, I wasn't surprised, I have to be honest. Because I, 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 I mean, I mean, look who's, do, we know who's doing the booking. So we know there's no surprises here. No, I mean, look, it would have made more sense, just if we're talking logic, let's just break it down for the rising star that everybody seems to be into, that everybody seems to be on board with, to kind of go over and kind of use this as a platform, uh, this tournament, this kind of tournament that's really not drawing any type of new viewers, not really exciting anybody out there. But at least the one thing that it could have done is maybe make a star out of Swerve. Not to say Swerve still might not become a star, but at least use this tournament to get him really over and beat all the top guys that they have in the company. So beating Moxley, Jay White, that's what they should have done. But okay, they didn't, and we go on. But the problem is now that he's, he's now in what? Keith Lee? I mean, Keith Lee hasn't been relevant in like a year, maybe more. That's unbelievable. That truly is unbelievable. They're going back to this like, Yeah, that's it's sad. Kind of, okay. It's kind of sad. Let's not but, talk about that, quick, though. Real quick, real quick. Yeah, real quick. This was a good promo, and it's kind of funny because he's supposed to be a heel character, but he really cut a babyface promo that this was tournament was supposed to like whatever, revolutionize or whatever he said that this tournament was supposed to do for AEW and wrestling and whatnot. He really cut a babyface promo here, and he was doing a really good job for the most part. I mean, Swerve is, I will say the one thing about Swerve, I mean, I might not like all of the stuff that he does in the ring, but he is kind of believable, and he does cut a good promo. When he has a topic and when he's passionate about something, he, he really does well. I didn't like a lot of the stuff that he did with Adam Page and that insane match that they had. I thought it was outrageous, but overall, I think Swerve is a talent, and if used correctly, he could be one of the top tier talents of this company. That's what I was going to say, too. It was a tough spot for a promo, but he did as good a job as you can do with it. So he's still yeah. kind of there. I don't think he's dead. But anyways, moving on. So if they're not going to elevate Swerve with this, what happened was that Eddie Kingston is the guy... It's a comeback story because he had lost his first two matches in this group, but he got all the way to the final. He's facing Brian Danielson to go to the final. Here he is, Eddie Kingston, the Mad King. <laughs> and he's having a match with the former WWE champion, Brian Danielson. So these guys had a hard-hitting match, strong style. You know, a lot of beating chops. up on each other, Punchy. chops to the chest. Lots of chops. Yeah. So they yeah. Beat, up, beat up on each other's chest for like, you know, a long time. More hard-hitting kicks. So these guys really take some damage. <laughs> <laughs> They're suffering to make their money, but you don't have to do this. I don't really like the strong style stuff. It doesn't really mean anything to me. I'm just as happy with someone who could just make it look real without actually pounding the crap out of somebody. But I'm going to skip to the ending of this. Eddie Kingston is going to actually win this. He's going to get put over by Brian Danielson, believe it or not. So Kingston's going to hit him with... That's his, It's called the Yurikan. It's his... Spinning back fist again, a second one, and then this is a this is another one of his finishing move. I guess it's just like a like a stack, you stack them up, and be surprised to see that Danielson took a clean pinfall there and put Eddie Kingston over. A lot of people like him. He's he's worked hard to get here. People say he's never got a chance, so here you are. It's like, here's your chance. We're putting you over. It's a very emotional win. It's a big win, obviously. But that stack, though, oh my god, that finishing move was... It's, uh, that's one of my <laughs> biggest issues with him. Like, it, it's not a good move to finish off a match here. I rewinded a little bit just so we could see it again. Very lightly drops up down. It looks like he was taking care of him. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, this... this this would have been a good move on like those old WCW shows we watched, where like that would have made more sense. But on a show like this, where everyone's kicking out of fucking 14 finishers, it's a little weird when someone gets pinned on a move like that. But anyway, so the final's gonna be John Moxley versus Eddie Kingston. Maybe that's why they didn't want to let Swerve win. I still think that he could have made the final and lost in some other way. If they really want Kingston to win, because it looks like that's where it's headed. Moxley's just gonna do the job to him, just like he did to 
Orange Cassidy. They're gonna have one last little confrontation here, and I think we should watch it because everyone's saying that Kingston is such a great promo, so let's listen to him a little bit. We don't really ever take a chance to listen to Eddie Kingston. So. Every time I've stuck my neck out for you, put my reputation on the line because I believe in you, fought by your side. All I've ever asked of you is 100% your best. And for a guy who's angry at the whole world and thinks the whole world's against him, you sure do got a lot of people that love you, man. Listen to this building, man. Everybody here in Orlando loves Eddie Kingston. Every single person in the building on Saturday at World's End in New York City is gonna love Eddie Kingston. They don't care whether you win or lose, but they do deserve your very best 100% of everything you have in your heart and your soul. They deserve your maximum effort. Problem is, I know you better than you know yourself. I know you can't beat me. And you know you can't beat me. So for my money, you've already lost. You've already given up. You're already making excuses. But that's not going to fly this time. A couple years ago, I gave you the shot of a lifetime. And I let you off the hook. I let you go out on your shield. I let you die a warrior's death. And I didn't have to because I wanted you to come back stronger because I believed in you this time. You're not gonna get one single favor. You wanna be a triple crown champion just like all your heroes? You're gonna have to earn every inch. Win or lose. No, man. no, 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 no. You talk enough. enough. You take it forever, you man. Yeah. Enough. That's enough. Let me tell you something, dog. Don't come out here and treat me dog. like your young boy bitch, Yuda, because I ain't no young boy, huh? Remember something, dog. I'm your senpai. I broke in before you. You're lucky I let you breathe. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. You're right, dog. You're right. I'm one of the most down people. I hate myself more than I hate anyone else. But on Saturday, on Saturday, <laughs> the king of the Bums <laughs> is going to push you. I'm going to give you everything I have. You better show your fighting spirit because I'm going to show you mine and I'm going to bust you up and enjoy it. <laughs> there you go. So these two guys have some history. They were friends on the indies, I guess. They were friends in AEW a little bit in the storyline for a certain period of time, but now Moxley's aligned with the Blackpool Combat Club people, but I'm pretty sure Kingston's gonna win. I mean, I'll just tell you my prediction. I think they're gonna put him over, because that would be really weird if maybe Moxley needs a win back after he lost to Orange Cassidy. <laughs> maybe Moxley should be the North American Triple Crown Champion. I don't know. Any thoughts on Kingston looking like he's gonna win tomorrow? And that promo that we just saw, the promo battle, I guess you call it. Let's start with Vlad. Where do I even begin? The booking is a little strange, of course, here as well. With Kingston, it's a little bit complicated because I do like his story. I've been saying this for a while. I like his, like, anytime tell me mention Eddie Kingston. I like his story, everything that he had to go through to make it in wrestling and that he's kind of a tragic figure and whatnot. But the fact that he just beat all these guys and then he just beat Danielson clean in the middle, okay, Danielson is a one-eyed pirate, whatever, okay, I understand that. But still, it was kind of, I want to say ridiculous at this point because he's an out of shape, he's a chubby kind of guy, he doesn't really have a good wrestling style, he wrestles like an old Japanese wrestler that's past his prime, you know? <laughs> and that's all he kind of really knows. And, and, I mean, I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. He's I give it the promo wrestling. work. You got to put him over for the promo work. Okay. He's got some weaknesses in his work, but yeah. Yeah. He's a great promo. But the fact is we've seen this before. Again, they had the same thing with him and Moxley when they were fighting for the title and it was much better then, but not that much better, but at least the promos were better. This was, this whole thing, this whole tournament is just a waste of goddamn time. I'm sorry. It's, I have no excitement for this. And I agree with you. If I want to make a – yes. Okay, just again, real quick. I don't want to take anything away from Eddie Kingston. He is a hell of a promo. And I've always said that's what he should stick to doing. He should kind of stick to being a, a promo guy and maybe being a manager of something. And then as far as who's going to win, yeah, I agree with you again. It, it's going to be Kingston. It's, if it's anybody else, this whole thing doesn't make any sense. What's the point of him coming back and – getting into the finals of the tournament if he's just going to end up losing to Moxley. Oh, God, that would be the ultimate bad Tony Khan booking. It has to be Kingston. Kingston has to go over at this point for it to make sense. 
Okay, let's get Robert's thoughts on this before we move on. So first of all, I want to say that I thought that was a good promo exchange. I enjoyed that. Now, yeah. I've been on record many times, not only tonight, but on previous episodes saying that I choose Mosley as a favorite to win the tournament. Having said that, I did not predict that Eddie Kingston would make it to the final. So that kind of, I don't know if I'm going to stick with my original prediction, because, you know, given Eddie Kingston's story and how you know, everyone's backing him, I'm not too sure, but I don't want to stray off my original prediction. So I'm going to be bold like I was with the Adam Copeland <laughs> devil prediction. So I'm going to make the bold choice and stick with my John Moxley prediction. Even though it seems like it's more likely going to be Eddie Kingston, I'm just going to stick with my Moxley prediction. I said it from the beginning. I'll just stick with it to the end. Um, All right, then. All right. Uh, so I do got one more thing prepared. I got uh, some clips prepared sure, for uh, how uh, Sting and Jericho ended up on this card because Sting is retiring soon, so... The story, to me, starts on AEW Collision. As some of you guys know, Kenny Omega has got diverticulitis. So he's out, mm -hmm. and him and Jericho are supposed to be the next in line to face Ricky Starks and Big Bill for the Tag Team Championships. So now Jericho has no partner, so this is going to be what Big Bill and Ricky Starks had to say about it. With the AEW World Tag Team Champions, Big Bill, Ricky Starks. As we know, you guys were scheduled to face the Golden Jets, Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega at World's End. But as we've learned, Kenny Omega is indefinitely out. So where do you guys go from here? Kenny Omega, apparently you have diverticulitis. First of all, that sounds made up. My Uncle Joe has gingivitis and he's doing just fine. So let me tell you what I think's really happening here. I think <laughs> you are afraid to face the greatest tag team in the history of professional us. That's us. That's what he's talking about. Kenny Omega, you don't have the guts to face us, okay? Guts. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, my I got God. Line up, baby. <laughs> so therefore, you and Chris forfeit your match at World's End against me and Big Bill. So that leads us to go in Pate in New York City. <laughs> guts. <laughs> <laughs> So Jericho's going to come out and he's going to say that he's going to find a partner. But I'm going to move on from that. This is from Collision. <laughs> <laughs> this was Collision on the 23rd. So I'm going to move on to Dynamite the 27th when kind of completely unrelated. But Shivani's in the ring World to introduce the Don Callis family for an in-ring promo. And Don Callis comes with his guys that he's recruited. Hobbs, Fletcher, Konosuke. He does this thing where he gives people gifts of like pictures, like AI pictures like cool looking pictures you know Vlad you were th thinking about a gift to get oh, that girl you're dating how about an AI picture mm. like <laughs> get her picture and make it look like <laughs> a, a, picture, a picture of Don Callis <laughs> <laughs> looking all buff <laughs> yeah. yeah this one they uh there he's with Fletcher beating up kangaroos in Australia so the thing that makes this connect to Chris Jericho is that Sammy Guevara comes out who had turned on Jericho to join the Don Callis family but he's been out for a while with the concussion and he kind of confronts Don Callis about it although they did make a picture for him too with him and his new baby and he got offended that they used the baby in the picture although it was kind of cute but he's pissed about that listen to the end of this and this is going to be the end of Sammy Guevara's involvement with the Don Callis family supporting you and Sammy I mean let's be honest you're not exactly mentally capable of being a parent. You're, you're going to need all the oh, help you man. can get, so we're here for you. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. You're worried about my parenting when you need to be worried about leading this group. I mean, we got Will Hobbs, who beat Chris Jericho. We got Big Take, who beat Kenny Omega twice. But these people don't remember it because you make everything about you. That's true. That's true. You know, I've had people that I would never expect asking me how I'm doing when I got concussed. But you know who I never got a message from? You. Uh, okay, I just gave you a present, but you, you know, you wanna shoot on me? Okay, here it is. You're disappointed that I didn't call you. Let me talk about my disappointment, Sammy. I'm disappointed that you dropped the ball when you got hurt and blew the greatest opportunity you ever had. I'm disappointed that 
where you didn't show up for work for five months because you were hurt and having babies and on maternity leave. So, let's get down to brass tacks. You have a choice to make. You either choose the other family or you choose the Don Callis family. He has to choose between his wife and kid or Don Callis. So let's see what he says. <laughs> what a choice. <laughs> but, Sammy, I know you're a hothead, but before you answer, I want you to think about this. Think very carefully about this answer. Because if you answer wrong, you are going to be remembered as just as big a failure as a wrestler as you're about to be as a parent. Oh! Oh, and that's it. Oh, boy. And that's the end. So this is a vehicle, I guess. I don't know if they were really gonna take Sammy away from the Don Callis family, but I think with the Kenny Omega injury, this is a vehicle to get Sammy back with Chris Jericho because he needs a partner. I don't know what you guys think about that. I'm kind of excited about Les Sex Gods finishing their story and becoming AEW Tag about, Team bro? Champions. <laughs> They almost did it early on in AEW. They had a tag team title shot, but they didn't win it. So I think that should have been the pay-per-view match, was just them two against Starks and Big Bill, but that's not what ended up happening. They're gonna shake hands, or they're gonna hug, actually. They, they're gonna they're give gonna the people hug, what they they're want. They're gonna hug, yeah, I'm very dramatic. Extending their hands like they're gonna just shake hands, but of course this is AEW, so you have to give the people what they want. <laughs> <laughs> And that's when Starks and Big Bill come in. All right, so then they're gonna leave him laying, and they're gonna need some help because this is gonna be a beatdown unless somebody helps. And the lights go out, and it's uh, the House of Black. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? It could have been the House of Black. It could have been I thought it was the House of Black. Been, I'm like, what the hell's the going on here? <laughs> but it turns out it's Sting and Darby. So they make it a eight-man tag for the pay-per-view. Sting and Darby and Jericho and Sammy against right. Big Bill, Ricky Who are they Starks. On? Big and Bill, Ricky Starks, people? and two guys from the Don Callis family. Oh, so gotcha. That's how they got Sting on the card, because this is going to yeah, be one of his <laughs> final matches. But anyways, it's just an attraction. I don't really care who wins. I think the good guys will probably win that one, especially since it's one of Sting's final matches. But yeah. we don't really need predictions for it. That's all I got prepared for the World Ends preview show. I could go up and down the card and see if there's anything that strikes your fancy. If you're interested in any of this, I could list the card for you. We've already talked about Swerve and Keith Lee. We're not interested in. Miro versus Andrade, also another one that I think is kind of falling flat on collision. Miro's wife is managing Andrade. So it's kind yeah, of an interesting like gimmick. Possible. It seems like it would be an interesting 80s type of story, but they just haven't really hit it with this one. Riho versus Tony Storm for Move the on. women's title, which we've talked a little Move bit on. about. <laughs> I don't expect Riho to win. And then we got oh, the God. TBS championship is Julia Hart versus Abaddon. Ooh. Oh, Abaddon. Jesus. I, I know, very oh, weird God. that she's been kind of pushed lately, but they're getting her on the show. Maybe they got a user, they're paying her. <laughs> mm. But that goes for a lot of people. Sure. So I really don't know what yeah. the excuse is there. She has a cool look. I liked her on Dynamite coming out to confront Julia Hart and Sky Blue. Julia Hart and Sky Blue I like as a team together. I think they look good. Yeah. <laughs> but other than that, well, they we're look not... good. They yeah, look they good. Do, they do look good. <laughs> we're not going to. You got me there. <laughs> That'll be it for the show. I'm going to watch it live, so I'm excited. And then next week, we'll, if there's anything that happens, we'll cover it next week. So if you guys are subscribed to our channel, watch out for that. And please hit subscribe if you enjoy us or if we're useful to you at all. Kill some time. We really appreciate it. We're trying to get to 100. We're trying to get to 100 now, but really we need to get to 1,000. That's when we got to start making some money, man. We need some moolah. Vlad needs some moolah, yeah. guys. So hit subscribe. That would, be, would be nice. Help us out. <laughs> Anyways, we'll be back. We're going to do our year-end awards, the Malapert Smart Awards. That's the next segment we're doing. Watch out for that one. We'll see you on the next one.